Hello, and welcome to Composer Toolbox, the show that takes an in-depth look at the common techniques utilized by the master composers and how you can practically apply them. In this revised episode, we're going to be taking a look at how John Williams uses themes and light motifs in the original Star Wars. To begin with, let's take a look at each theme so we can get acquainted with them. First, the theme that we all know and love, the A section of the main theme. Throughout the movie, Williams also uses this as Luke's theme. Williams says this about it, quote, Luke's theme is fanfare-ish and brassy and bold and masculine and noble and all those things. When this music is done softer, it tends to be done in some sort of brass, horns if it is more heraldic. It's the full glow of the glorious brass section of the London Symphony Orchestra, end quote. The theme itself is used about 20 times throughout the film, and it is characterized by a major scale. Next, we have the B section of the main theme. What's interesting to note about this B section is that it's only used twice throughout the movie outside of the opening text crawl. Once during the queue, the swashbucklers and Luke and Leia are in the midst of the chasm crossfire. Here, hold this. And during the throne room scene. The theme itself also continues in a major scale, like the A section does. Next up is the Rebel Fanfare. It is also used about 20 times, and it is characterized by planing major triads. Next is the Force theme, which is also used to represent Obi-Wan and as a sort of fate theme. It is once again used about 20 times and is characterized by a minor scale. Williams says this about it, quote, I think of Ben's theme as also being the theme of the Jedi Knights, the old republic that Ben remembers. It also overlaps into the area of being the theme for the Force, the good Force that Ben represents, end quote. Next is Leia's theme. It is only used about 10 times. Williams says this about it, quote, The princess theme is very romantic. First time Luke sees her, he says how beautiful she is. It really is a fairy tale princess melody, end quote. Next is the imperial theme, which also serves as Vader's theme in this film. It is used about 30 times, and it's characterized by planing minor triads. Williams says this about it, quote, Vader's theme is a lot of bassoons and muted trombones and low things, since he is the bad side of the Force, end quote. Next is the Death Star theme, also known as the Imperial Motif. <laughs> It essentially plays each time the Death Star, or a Star Destroyer, is used as an establishing shot, and it is characterized by arpeggiated minor triads. There are other incidental themes that appear throughout the film, but they aren't really in the scope of this video. About all of these themes, Williams says this, quote, I think the music relates to the characters and the human problems, even when they are Wookiees. This is the gut thrust of the thing in music, a very romantic theme for the princess, a heroic march for the Jedi Knights, 
All of this material has to do with the fairy tale aspect of it. I didn't want to hear a piece of Dvorak here, a piece of Tchaikovsky there. What I wanted to hear was something to do with Ben Kenobi, more developed here, and something to do with his death over there. What we needed were themes of our own, which one could put through all the permutations of a dramatic situation. This was my discussion in my dialogue with George, that I felt we needed our own themes, which could be made into a solid dramaturgical glue from start to finish. To whatever extent we have succeeded, that is what I tried to do. End quote. So with that, let's take a more in-depth look at each theme, starting with the main theme. After Williams introduces us to the theme in the opening text crawl, he doesn't play it again until we see Luke. Here we can see that Williams mainly associates the main theme with Luke throughout the film. When we meet Luke for the first time, he plays the theme several times so we can associate it with him. And then he doesn't play it again until another important moment. He doesn't play it while Luke is whining about his life, and he doesn't play it while Luke is eating dinner with his aunt and uncle. He plays it once Luke leaves and his uncle, non-committally, says he'll let Luke leave after the next harvest. Oh, and he can't stay here forever. Most of his friends have gone. It means so much to him. I'll make it up to him next year. I promise. <sighs> Luke's just not a farmer, Owen. He has too much of his father in him. That's what I'm afraid of. This use of the theme helps us understand better the unfortunate situation that Luke is in, and it helps us relate to and sympathize with him. At the binary sunset scene, Williams doesn't play Luke's theme. He chooses to instead use the Force theme, which I'll talk about later. Luke's theme seemed to be better put to use as we see Luke searching for R2. And then the main theme isn't played again until after the cantina scene, when we see Luke sell his speeder. I'm sure it must be your fault. You watch your language. All right, give it to me. I'll take it. Look at this. Ever since the XP38 came out, they just aren't in demand. It'll be enough. Again, there were many scenes leading up to this one where Williams could have played the main theme simply because Luke was on screen, but he doesn't. Williams waits until this brief but important moment when Luke sells off the last thing he has left on Tatooine. Then, the theme isn't used again until later, when our heroes overtake a control room inside the Death Star. And even here, Williams might not be using the theme to represent just Luke, but our heroes as a whole. Williams uses the theme several more times as our heroes, including Luke, go after the princess. Why didn't you say so before? I did say so before. Oh, the uniform. I'm Luke Skywalker. I'm here to rescue you. You're who? I'm here to rescue you. I've got your... Williams is probably using this theme now to directly contrast Luke as he was back on Tatooine. He plays it differently than how he played it earlier in the film. He's a different person now, and the different treatment of the theme represents that. Later, Williams uses the main theme to represent the culmination of Luke's journey as he successfully murders thousands of government officials and law enforcement. You switched off your targeting computer. What's wrong? Nothing. I'm all right. But next, let's look at how John Williams uses the Rebel fanfare. It's played many times in quick succession throughout the opening sequence.
notice that through all of these times, even though we call this the rebel fanfare, there is nothing going on in the scene that would indicate the rebels succeeding in a triumphant way. In this opening scene, rather, they're on the run. Now, Williams could be simply using this as a motif that represents the rebellion, or he could be using it as something more. Fast forward to the scene where the Millennium Falcon is being pulled into the Death Star, we hear another few statements of the Rebel fanfare. Clear Bay 327. We're opening the magnetic field. Now, I've always thought this placement was a little odd, but looking at its uses up until this point in the film, I think it makes sense. In the opening scene, the fanfare was used almost as a rallying cry, or a call for help, as the rebels were being mercilessly slaughtered. Now, it's used in sort of the same way as the Millennium Falcon is being captured. And the rebel fanfare is used many more times, like this during the rescue. The escape, Run. I hope that old man got the tractor beam out of commission or this is going to be a real short trip. Okay, hit it. And the TIE fighter attack. It isn't until after the Death Star blows up that we finally get the rebel fanfare in a victorious context. Next, let's take a look at the Force theme. In this film, the Force theme is most closely associated with Obi-Wan Kenobi, so much so that in the 1977 quote I mentioned earlier, Williams calls it Ben's theme. We hear the Force theme for the first time as Leia is recording the message directed to Obi-Wan. In terms of subtext here, Leia is recording a message that is, we later learn, directed to Obi-Wan Kenobi, a Jedi Master from the days of the Old Republic. I think Williams could have simply played Leia's theme first here, since we see her first, but Williams knew the connection of the recording to Ben was important, so he emphasized its connection to the Force before introducing us to another character theme. The next time the Force theme is used is at the binary sunset scene. Williams has this to say about it, quote, George asked for Ben's theme there once he had heard it. I'd originally scored that scene with Luke's theme, but when he heard the other, he said, could you put Ben's theme in there? He liked it for some reason or other better for that scene. It is difficult to explain why. It is contemplative and reflective, and it works really very well. I think I have to say in the end he was very right. But the use of the Force theme also probably has some subtext to it, too. Luke wants to leave. There's nothing for him on Tatooine. As he looks towards the two stars, out into the vast expanse of space, he longs for something, maybe for purpose. As he does this, Williams plays the Force theme. It will be Luke's contact and connection with the Force that gives him purpose later in the story. It's Luke's connection with the Force that also drives the events of the rest of the trilogy forward. It's what successfully leads the Rebellion to victory in Return of the Jedi. Now obviously, Williams had no clue two sequels would be made to this film, but I think he still understood on a basic level the importance of Luke's longing for purpose, his purpose, that is to be a Jedi Master. Much of the rest of the uses of the Force theme throughout the film happen in conjunction with Ben. Hello there. When he's first introduced. Come here, my little friend. Don't be afraid. Oh, don't worry. You'll be all right. Hmm. 
Rest easy, son. You've had a busy day. Your fortune when Ben uses the force. And when Ben tells Luke to use the force. Use the force, Luke. Let go, Luke. The force is strong with this one. Luke, trust me. But there are also other incidents where the force theme is used as a theme for Luke's journey. For example, when he heads back home. And when he tells Obi-Wan about it later. I want to come with you to Alderaan. There's nothing for me here now. I want to learn the ways of the Force and become a Jedi like my father. It's also used as an all-purpose theme, as well as a theme that connects all the good guys together. Next, both the Leia theme and the Imperial theme are used in sort of the same way. And by that, I mean they don't really add any subtext to the film. They mainly play when their respective characters are on screen. For Leia, it's used in places such as this. And here. But for some reason, it's also used here. Williams says this about to that particular moment. Quote, I used part of the princess theme in the beginning of it for two reasons. I took dramatic license because it was the most sweeping melody in the score, but I'm also playing it because it's what's inside of her and Luke during their reaction to his death." End quote. For the Imperial theme, it pretty much plays whenever we see stormtroopers, Darth Vader, or really any other Imperial force on screen, except for here. I imagine Williams uses the Imperial theme here either because the looming presence of the stormtroopers just around the corner, or it could also be representing the message that R2 is carrying, readouts of the Imperial Death Star. But that's pretty much it for the main themes that Williams uses. There are other smaller motifs that Williams uses throughout the film, such as the Dies Irae motif, the Jawa theme, the Imperial motif, this imperialistic rhythm, not unlike the Imperial March, this ostinato that often accompanies the Imperial theme, and this eerily similar possible precursor to the Imperial March. Keep in mind that the Imperial March wasn't composed until the next film. But I think the main point of application here is that themes that you compose can be more than just a theme that plays when its respective character is on screen. They can connect characters. They can represent ideas and objects as well, and not just people. They can help tell a story. And I think that's one of the most important things to remember as a film composer. Tell a story and stick to it. Don't ever portray the story. Stick to the story. And that's about it. Thank you so much for watching. If you like what I do and want some snazzy benefits, such as PDFs of my analyses and early access, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Be on the lookout for the next episode talking about harmony in the original Star Wars, and as always, I'll see you later. Goodbye.